Hello everybody, welcome to my new video. Today I will be going to a concert of my favorite Russian band, I Speak, and I decided why not to make a vlog about it. And this is an electronic band, they sing in Russian and English, they discuss really important topics, and I actually made videos about them three years ago in 2020. I made a language breakdown of two songs. There I discussed the problem of domestic violence in Russia and uh, that Russia back then, and by the way, now in 2023, still doesn't have any laws that protect women from domestic violence. Even other post-Soviet countries do have it, but Russia doesn't and we don't have such things as restraining order and it is really uh, common to blame the victims. Russian traditional values. And another song is called Marching. It is a song about the over-militarization. That song really predicted what was going to happen in Russia in three years. I mean, it already was happening. The censorship, elimination of opposition, and so on and so forth. It was really important for me that one of my favorite music bands also makes statements that are important to me, and I made a video about that. But it's funny how many people in my comments write that Natasha used to be a YouTuber without politics. She just simply showed her life in Russia, but now she became a crazy, evil, radical, feminist lesbian, and she hates Russia and everybody, and she makes only negative videos about Russia. But let me tell you, even in 2020, three years ago, I already was a a radical feminist lesbian who made videos about politics. So I didn't only make videos about like housing in Russia or the Russian language, but I already touched such topics as well as about Navalny, about arrest of the governor Sergei Furgal. Like, yeah, I didn't uh, fully went into politics, but I felt that something was going wrong and that's what happened. But yeah, returning to I Speak, even before in 2018, the messages that their songs conveyed really bothered the Russian State Duma deputies who sit there all day, get huge service and make up more ways to make life of Russian citizens worse. They started repress the band to cancel the concerts all over Russia and the peak of that moment was in Novosibirsk when they were detained before the concert. And that was one of the most famous cases of censorships of Russian musicians, but believe me, it wasn't the first one and wasn't the last one, because what I'm telling now refers not only to I Speak, but to many other musicians, and especially after the beginning of the full-scale invasion to Ukraine in 2022, many other Russian musicians also were repressed, claimed by the government as foreign agents, which basically in Russia means claiming a person as the enemy of the state, as they like to do in the USSR. And many musicians had to leave the country. And for example, Manetochka, Noise MC, Zimfira, they made statements online where they opposed the war, or they made concerts abroad where they collected donations for Ukrainians, but they cannot return to Russia because basically they will be put to jail for discrediting the army or spreading fakes about the special military operation and so on. I once again made sure that they are cool guys, they are not cringy Z people, because actually my friend Zach recently made a video about Russian musicians and who of them turned Z and who of them are decent people. And it is so sad to see some musicians like Polina Gagarina. She was presenting Russia at the Eurovision and there a video of her speaking to the queer icon Conchita Wurst. But five years later, Polina Gagarina is performing at the state propaganda concerts in favor of invasion to Ukraine. It's such a silly question, but how do you feel? Well... <laughs> interested that the time when that censorship started coincided with the time when I went to university and began to learn more about life in Russia, what's wrong with the Russian government, and that's why I associate my 
first years in the university with listening to I speak and that's why it's so important for me. I am actually really embarrassed, no, not embarrassed, but scared. I actually don't know what, I, what to expect, um, what people will be there and I'm going there alone. And actually now I want to show you my outfit fully. suitable for the concert of I speak are these glasses but I'm too embarrassed to wear them it makes me really like in that six months in Berlin TikTok or six months in Belize so I went to the concert and I was worried that I would be late but actually I was even early because there was a huge line and behind me there was a girl and two guys and I jumped into conversations with them even though it was really unusual for me to meet people at some public setting because I went there alone and it was a challenge for me but we discussed uh, you know typical Russian immigrant stuff and I bought merchandise these t-shirts I will show it to you first to say there were young Georgians in the concert as well and I heard them speaking Georgian then we waited for one hour and firstly there was kind of a warm-up a freaky looking guy and he sang some Russian famous cringe songs and he even sang a part of Shaman's song. If you watch other Russian YouTubers like Roman, you know that Shaman is a propaganda project, songs in support of the Russian government, of the war and so on. It's total cringe, but it's funny how this singer was mocking on Shaman's song. Then we waited again, there was some suspense in the beginning and finally they came out to the stage. First, what they said was that we are I speak, we are from Russia, but we stand with Ukraine. But we stand with Ukraine. <laughs> And then the concert started and I want to show you some footage from there but be careful because there will be a lot of flash lights and really loud sound. visual effects on the show and actually you could see faces of Nastya and Korda on the screen which is helpful if you are standing far from the stage and this concert really proved me that Nastya is such a good singer because she could sing on all these high notes live without any autotune and effects and it is just amazing <laughs> the show between different songs there was this banner we stand with ukraine and uh, then the crowd starts uh, to chant this slogan Niet vayne, no to war which is a uh, russian anti-war slogan Niet vayne, Niet vayne, Niet vayne. i felt like i'm once again at the protest of russians in belize and now I tell you about the songs that were there and I liked the most. And one of them was Fairy Tale or Skazka. It is uh, one of the oldest songs how I started my acquaintance with I Speak. And actually the video on YouTube to that song is very psychedelic. Then there was this song called Pluck Pluck about domestic violence. And another song was uh, Terrorist. And the lines from this song are Mama, they say I'm a terrorist. What? I did nothing wrong, but I got on the blacklist. This song perfectly shows how Russian people who 
dare to oppose the government are being treated as uh, enemies of the state and being persecuted. I mean, they have to run from the government to other countries. Then there was a song Grusna Suka or Sad Beach. And the music video to that song on YouTube is really dark. I like how they are taking the aesthetic of Russian folklore, but they are showing it not in the cringy klukva way. This is how foreigners falsely see Russia, but in authentic way. I don't know how to explain, but I mean, I like it. That song, Smerti Bolshe Niet, or Death No More, you can tell which song stands out the most and which song is the most popular by the amount of phones that people take out when the song is started. And probably because the video to that song has the most views on YouTube. They also made it on the backdrop of a governmental building, which was really disliked by the Russian authorities. <laughs> context of the song, these are the words pronounced by a policeman towards the protesters. You will be detained with the others at the square while I will be rolling a joint in my new apartment, which shows how the Russian government is giving big salaries to the police and Amon who beat people up at the protest. And uh, there were songs from the new album and actually the music video to one of the songs is really cool. There, Nastya and Kolya are singing on the Red Square. It is really cool because I would love to imagine such a picture in the real life, but in the real life the Red Square is surrounded by fences and they check your bags before entering the square to see the freaking patriarch Kirill giving a speech or shaman in this black leather Nazi aesthetic coat. <laughs> So the concert was over and actually after that I again met with the guys, we shared our impressions and actually after that we went to walk uh, in a park and there we sat and discussed again some really common topics for us like how we feel in Georgia as Russian immigrants, where we want to go next, how we managed or didn't manage to open bank accounts in this country. I'm having so many of such conversations with Russians whenever I go to some events where there are mostly Russian people. If you, like me, are a fan of I Speak, I hope that it was interesting for you to visit their concert online. And if you don't know about I Speak, I would recommend you to take a look at them, at their music, and I mean at music of some other Russian singers, of course, only of those who made a statement against the war, because we don't support sellouts, whatever their music is. And I hope that what I told you today is uh, informative about the today's situation in Russia. But anyway, thank you so much for watching. Write your opinion in the comments. Goodbye. Пока-пока.